now thinking about that, actually, I really wonder about um, these protests that are happening because a lot of them, uh, the, the problem that they're bringing up is about institutions and institutionalized patterns of relationship. Mm -hmm. And it seems that the problem is because it's institutionalized. It's not human relating to human, it's authority relating to human. Yeah, or even bureaucratic kind of institutions, you know, uh, there it's it's the whole uh, uh, bet on institutional performance that is 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 problematic. Um, one size fits all, you know, institutions are great big, huge things. So we're not talking about the institution that is the bread store or something, you know, uh, we're talking about huge systems. Um, that, you know, the funny thing about an institution, the funny thing about institutional life, and it's going to tag with your aunt story, but in a funny way, is that um, people can enter an institution, do very little, like have a bullshit job, and the effects are very powerful. Um, and this is, um, yeah, so this is a uh, built and inherent risk with institutions because there's no heart. There's no heart or mind there in many cases. Things are just on automatic. And I think one of the things about the COVID is that we've all been, uh, uh, we have to stay away from our institutions and people are starting, it doesn't take much to start to see how constructed they are, or how irrelevant they are to what is matters to a human being, you know? Um, and so that's an interesting phenomenon. What's the alternative to institutions? That's a, that's a, that's a great question. That's a great question for a community to, to uh, think about. Um, why do we need institutions? You know, you can go into those whys. Why do we even have institutions? Uh, maybe we needed them before we had the internet. Maybe we needed them during the industrial era. Maybe they were uh, relevant then. Are they relevant today? Uh, you start to ask that question, you don't even, you know, a lot of things are possible today, like all these big real estate buildings and all those big, you know, firms in New York City, literally, they could never be occupied again. We literally have that chance. What's easier? Is it easier to boot up that again and have everybody take the train and all this stuff? Or is it easier just to spend like a lot of infrastructure dollars on technology so you don't have to do that again? Like these are choices. These are choices that are out there. Um, if, if those big buildings are not reoccupied, then inner city life would be, the rents would be much lower. The opportunity for, for let's say, uh, black or minority business would, would be larger. There could be a revitalization. There's so much possibility in making just that one choice, you know? And of course, I'm not saying one person should make that choice, but maybe there's many, many executives that are making that choice. And um, that's kind of an interesting uh, uh, place to be standing. Now it's gonna come with disruption and disruption causes this energy and just some low winners and losers before, but um, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's at least, you know, kind of an interesting experiment. Yeah, this, one of the things I've noticed with COVID is the kind of anticipation of being out of work and being at home all the time and kind of the idea of like that isolation and closing in of, of the world. And then as things kind of go back to normal, uh, well, at least in British Columbia, because the, they've been able to flatten the curve quite a lot. So they're unlocking a lot. Um, I've noticed family and friends going back to work and back to the old way. That's worse than the lockdown was because they've had this exposure of like more of an open schedule and more autonomy oh, yeah time to reflect time yeah. to reconnect with family yeah 
Yes, that's a good point because, you know, a lot of people do that. Like it's once you've been, if you've had your career and you've been out of like your career for a long time and then, oh, you go back. Now you can't see it the way you saw it before. Now, like you start, you start to see what it really is, you know, like that little movie that's been playing in your head, like, oh, I've got a big desk and like I'm doing important work. It's not there anymore. And you just like walk in and you're like, this is fucking crazy. Like, this is like fucking crazy. And you look at how you use your time. And it's just, it's just, I mean, one of the reasons why there's so much drama in the workplace, people are bored. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, so then there's this, there's this, this natural arising of energy to go and poke at someone or to fuck with someone. And then that gets like, and then you got your deadlines and then, and then it actually is a way for the human system to create meaning inside the workplace. And if you, if you have the fo good fortune one day of noticing that when you walk into work, it's like being on a drugs. You're like, what the you know, like you can't make any meaning out of what's going on anymore because you're not running that fantasy in your head. Yeah, I know that in myself for sure. And it's been funny watching Alex, our son, kind of like, he's still pretty young, but you can see him get bored and then start smashing things and getting more and more violent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's also, you know, a, a component of the, the, uh, riots, you know, the energy has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I like some of them uh, um, protest um, in the right in the right states, state of mind, um, you know, they started to sing and dance. And you see it kind of like, it kind of like releases the energy. Also, you know, it's not appropriate in every situation. And, um, but some of them have turned into almost like people just want to be out there with other people or something you know um, as if this lockdown and isolation is making us want to get out of the house <laughs> i don't know and then of course this is the app the, the exact way these complex systems work so you know you have more people congregating in more less protected spaces faster than maybe what have happened before. We don't know. Um, but it just shows you the fallacy of trying to control these things the way we not ordinarily have gone about things. Uh, and com complex adaptive systems thinking, I tell my, or, um, when, I, when I coach managers, I'm like, never try to strategize your employees because they're smart too. So, you know, you try to strategize them and then it goes underground, you get all these other games and this and that. So this is why complex adaptive thinking uh, always escalates complexity, you know? So the coronavirus, viruses are a perfect example. You know, we adapt to them by vaccinating them, then they're gonna get more complex and then this and uh, pesticides, same thing, they're in, the Darwinian attitude is in the way we frame complexity and in our response. And the question is, can we come up with a understanding of systems that doesn't lead us to that response? It doesn't escalate the complexity. Now, this is a hole in our toolkit. We, I, I don't know of one, um, but I think that's a, it's interesting um, kind of um, or being open to that. The brand new Future Thinkers Members Portal is now live. Develop your sovereignty and self-knowledge with our in-depth courses, get access to our weekly sense-making calls, join the Q&As with past podcast guests, and much more. Become a Future Thinkers member today at futurethinkers.org slash members. Enter the Future Thinkers giveaway and win our brand new community membership, including in-depth courses, private calls, and more, as well as a supply of Qualia, a complete cognitive upgrade for your brain. To enter the contest, simply go to futurethinkers.org slash giveaway and sign up for our mailing list to instantly get our 50-page guide on how to adapt to the future. There are many ways to increase your chances of winning. Enter the competition today.